you've mentioned that um, it's a perception that migrant workers contribute to crime and all these kinds of things. Um, is there any way for us to um, determine the veracity of these claims? Assumptions that crime is tied to migrants, where in actual fact, if you look at the statistic data that is shared by the police, uh, crime rate uh, come, uh, um, being done by migrants are actually nowhere near the same. I mean, this is, this is clearly um, uh, labeling without uh, evidence. Um, and this sentiment towards migrants is not special just to Malaysia. It's everywhere in the world, predominantly. However, Malaysia, to me, stands out a bit that our policy towards migrants is so archaic compared to other countries. That's, that's, that's the difference, I think. Um, and well, like I said, these sentiments towards and these beliefs is nothing new. It's always been there in most societies all over the world. As people feel threatened, as people um, don't know about the other community and there is no push to know, and if there is some form of exploitation, then these sentiments overtake even evidence. And I think this is also what's happening in Malaysia. And for Malaysia, I think what's also more critical is the fact that the number of migrant workers in Malaysia are so high. It's like half of our workforce are migrant workers. So this whole notion of getting rid of migrant workers would mean you nearly have a 50% reduction of our workforce. Would that result in Malaysians taking the job? I doubt it. Well, I suppose then it comes down to the, the, the fact that do we care enough Again, I think we, we, we're just going to um, circle back to our earlier conversation about this sense of social cohesion uh, with migrants. I think the elephant in the room that I want to address is why are certain migrant groups more demonized than others? And I think I'm referring to the Rohingya question here. Yes, so I mean, it's been an interesting journey because I remember this issue um, since, let's say, since 2011, you know, like when there was this strange refugee swap deal that happened between uh, Myanmar, Australia and Malaysia, where um, they did some kind of agreement where they would send Muslim Rohingya refugees to Malaysia um, in lieu of, let's say, Christian or non-Muslim uh, refugees to, to, to Australia. Um, and back then, there was still, I suppose, a sense of Muslim solidarity with the Rohingya community. But now in 2020, and what has happened um, in recent months, it's quite shocking how that seems to have changed. And probably I just want to know like, why has that happened? And what are the implications of Okay, uh, that's actually very interesting. Uh, and I. I totally agree with you on the fact that it's as though Malaysia suddenly became a Jekyll and Hyde. Just a year and a half ago, we were that supportive of Rohingya, and it's like suddenly we just flipped over. And um, on, on, if you're just looking at it on surface, uh, I guess you could just call it as what it is. This is outright racism and xenophobia. However, I'd like to just slightly unpack it a little bit. Um, the, the, the magnitude of anger and hatred that we are seeing is also predominantly mostly online. Uh, so it's, we have not really seen, we, we've not seen physical, serious physical attacks by just the community towards uh, a Rohingya community. I mean, there's not been violent episodes that's happening, a similar, uh, um, in real life, yeah. So, in, yeah. So, that, you know, so one, uh, which is a good thing, I guess, is that it is still contained online. Now, again, uh, one of the reasons why I think there has been a rise is, of course, a lot of uh, xenophobic and racist people have nothing else to do during MCO and they've been stuck and they've only got their keyboards and they just went a bit bonkers on it. One. Second is also the fact that, um, people are just more online because of the COVID. So there has, and um, um, so it has amplified, but also what my concern is how this amplification affects people who are generally not against, right? 
and how it has fed into the fear. Uh, fear of uh, migrants coming in to take over our lives, our jobs, our women, and whatnot, kind of thing. Because those are the thumbs of the things that have been going on. There is an element of a uh, strong element of racism. The Rohingyas, the most prosecuted minority, one of the most persecuted minorities in the world for more than 40 years, have been deprived of, in Rakhine State itself, have been deprived of the most basic necessities. So they've been living I mean, in the most um, unacceptable living conditions. And the fight that they had to go through to get here, uh, while at one text, one pr uh, angle you're seeing that these are survivors, but another angle is that, another part is that, they also don't have the same um, they don't put the same measure of certain, uh, it's not values, certain aspects uh, that are similar to Malaysia, for, for Malaysians, for instance, what has been uh, so often uh, cited is hygiene. Everybody is saying that Rohingya, uh, Rohingyas are dirty um, and it's become a blanket, which is totally unfair. And if you look at it as well, if you're living in conditions that is impossible to maintain certain hygiene, one, and if you just recently arrived, another, these images have been the ones that has um, represented a whole community. And, and this is also another reason why I think um, this is the problem that, mm, uh, is, is happening is the images of Rohingya that is being shown to Malaysians and the simplicity of how Malaysians read things has resulted into this. And it is because of um, not just lack of understanding of how you view.